Hello friends, I like to eat, I like to cook, and I like to feed people. Anyone that's lived with me or been to a party at my house can tell you that. My creed when it comes to cooking is to measure things as little as possible, experiment a lot, and observe no cultural boundaries. Years ago, my friend Scott McGrath was telling me about his great eggplant crop, and he was making a lot of baba ganoush, which is like a Middle Eastern dip with tahini, roasted eggplant, lemon juice, and some other stuff. And he's like, yeah, you just take a torch, and you just torch the crap out of the eggplant until it's completely cooked through inside. And I was like, hmm, that's that sounds interesting. So when I got home, I took some eggplants, threw them on top of the gas burner, like I roast peppers on top of the gas burner, just right over the flame. Just charred them and charred them and charred them until they looked terrible and they just kind of collapsed and got all gushy inside. And I was like, okay, this adds a whole new dimension of possibilities to eggplant. One day I had the great idea to take some of that pulp, mince it up and add it to some of my tomato salsa and a star was born. I've been making it ever since and it's awesome. So preparing for this video, I looked it up and it turns out that eggplant salsa is actually a thing. I didn't look that hard, but I didn't see any recipes that actually use this method to prepare the eggplant. So having not tried roasting it in the oven first or just cubing it up and adding it, I'm just going to say no. Char the eggplant. It's not about just the eggplant. It's about the char. It's about that toasted char broiled flavor. So tomorrow morning, we're going to get up, go pick some great ingredients in the garden, make a huge batch of salsa, hopefully, which I'm going to freeze most of so I can have that nice, fresh salsa all through the winter time. We're going to make some fresh corn tortillas from corn I grew this year, totally old school style Chinese hot chili oil, which is another weird thing I add to my tacos that's absolutely delicious. And I'm going to quick fry some venison up in some pepper oil and onions and spices and stuff like that. It's going to be so good. I can't wait tomorrow to sit down with my pile of taco makings, the Mexican Coke I've been saving, a beer, and pig out in front of you guys and make you watch me eat all that amazing food. So here's our corn. Last night I took this off the cob, put it in a pan with some lime made from burning seashells. Watch my video on making lime if you're interested in that. You can also make it from eggshells. I boiled it for a while and then let it soak overnight. So we're gonna clean off the outer skin of the corn. You can see it's kind of turned black by rubbing it and we're gonna rinse it to get rid of all this lime and get the water running clear and then we'll cook it some more. So I just wanna rub this a lot to get all this uh, outer skin off. I'm just learning my way around this process, really. And now we put this back in the pan. We're gonna cook it for a while and then clean it some more. Look at that monster. morning. We'll be using a lot of very high quality ingredients today and that of course is no accident. I started planning this food when I started planning my garden in the winter. Now I realize not everyone can get or have the very highest quality ingredients so I'll be commenting as we go along though on which ingredients it's important to have at the best quality starting with tomatoes. Tomatoes are the bulk of the salsa and you know a bad tomato is just a shadow of what it could be. It's hard to make really good salsa without good tomatoes. But it's not just the quality of the tomato but the type of tomato as well. So let's take a look at a few different tomatoes and talk about that. All right, let's look at some tomatoes. Watery tomatoes make watery salsa. Look how solid the flesh on this is. This is a what I think is usually called an ox heart type of paste and processing tomato. It's just, you know, super thick walls and it's got this huge core and just very little pulp. So I've been saving seed from this uh, to sell on my website this year and a lot of the tomatoes only have about 25 to 30 seeds. So I, I do have seed for this and this, by the way, for sale on my website. And uh, yeah, I really like this for processing because it just doesn't have a lot of juice and that's great for salsa because you're mincing the stuff up really fine you add some salt and it pulls the juice out and this is going to be a much less watery salsa this is another one that's pretty meaty so you can see how thick these walls are here it does have certainly more seed and pulp than this but it's a pretty 
pretty solid tomato. This is called Zapotec or Zapoteca from Mexico. Big fan of this, very rich uh, red tomato flavor. So this is more of a classic um, small pear-shaped paste tomato of aroma type. These are actually pretty juicy. You know, when you mince these up, they, they create a lot of juice. And so I tend to prefer for processing, for salsa, these type right here, the big uh, meaty ox heart types. Let's talk about peppers for a minute. If I have a choice, I'm gonna use several different types. I have some sweet, thick-walled bell peppers here. These are gonna be, you know, not hot at all. And the, most of them will tend to have like a brighter, lighter flavor. The thinner walled chilies, as you get down, they tend to have a richer flavor. These are Anaheim's, AKA California chilies. Like if you buy them dried in the store, they're called California chilies. We're gonna use some of these dry for chili powder, but we're also gonna use some fresh in the salsa. And I would like to have both of these if I can, or similar peppers. Then uh, some thin walled hot chilies. These are cayenne. I usually grow this, which is chili arbol, and you use those fresh for salsa too, but I didn't, I didn't grow any this year. So any thin walled uh, ripe uh, chili, Will work. So we'll be using a lot of uh, coriander today and a lot of people probably already know that coriander and cilantro are the same plant. I usually grow my own of both as much as possible and what I'll typically do is grow batches like several batches of cilantro and I'll just let a couple of those batches go to seed. Kind of roll this to get any uh, small stems that are still stuck on the seeds. Winnow this out a little bit by you know moving it around in the tray because the seeds will roll away from the rest of this stuff. Actually, that's pretty clean, so it looks good. Good to go. As you may recall, I said I don't measure things if I can help it. I'm not measuring anything here. I'm just going to do these kind of rough proportions to start, and then I'm going to taste it, okay? That's what it's about. The proof is in the eating of the pudding. Taste your food, adjust it as necessary, and that gets you more in touch uh, with what's going on and gets you the results that you want. But I'm going to start with these rough proportions. I think I'm going to go pick a few more of these sweet peppers and a few more Anaheims. Otherwise, I have this big pile of tomatoes. I have some lemons for lemon juice. I have cilantro. I do have cilantro in the garden, but I didn't have enough. I, I have enough, but I'd have to clear cut my whole patch. So I just went and bought some. The eggplants, I prefer small eggplants. I would actually prefer them smaller, like this size and down. I would actually prefer to have like the long skinny Asian types or maybe like an inch and a half in diameter. Those are really good because you, when you roast them, they cook fast and they get a lot of that roasted flavor because there's less uh, bulk in the center of the eggplant. I have onion here. I'm gonna probably only use Use this much onion but I'm gonna cut it super fine and so that flavor gets all through the whole uh, salsa. Chili powder. So these are some pieces of dried Anaheim. I'm going to toast these, buzz them up into a powder. When you buy chili powder in the States, it's usually a, a spice blend. Garlic powder, cumin, coriander. I'd recommend not buying that and either making your own or buying just straight chili powder, which you can find occasionally. I have a video on making this chili powder. Salt. Now the spices, this is coriander, this is cumin. These live on my counter all the time. So they're absolutely fresh when I grind them. If you pre-grind these spices or buy these pre-ground, the flavors are really volatile and they'll just like evaporate off and disappear. I highly recommend using fresh if you can and look out for old spice grinders to uh, keep them in. I also use black pepper. Oh, a note on the lemons. I prefer lemon. The tradition is more lime. Lime's great, I, I love lime. But given a choice, I'm actually gonna use lemon as a preference. I need to roast the eggplants, the sweet peppers, and Anaheim's. I hope these eggplants are good. I didn't have enough in my garden. Of course, I prefer whenever possible to roast on charcoal, but if I was just making a small batch of this for a day or two or for dinner, I would just uh, throw it on top of the gas burner. So as the peppers get cooked enough, this is fine, charred on both sides. You want to sweat them a little bit. Put them in a bowl and put a towel over the top or wrap them in a towel. Put them in a bowl and put a lid on it, anything like that. All right, we have char fail here because um, this charcoal is soft wood. It's actually just going out. It's pretty bad charcoal. It's just some old pallet wood. All right, we just finished these off on a gas burner. Get a couple of these going at a time. This is what we want flaky, charred, black, and goodness. So I'm just cooking the necks on these a little bit more, but you wanna kind of, see that? Nice and soft and, and hollow feeling. You wanna feel around and poke them. Like this base isn't cooked right here, so do what you need to do to cook that stuff. It matters what size you cut things. I want these to be about a quarter inch and smaller. 
you know, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. I'm not going to like waste a lot of time making sure it's perfect or anything, but you know, roughly I want them smaller than not. It just matters. Like it tastes different. The flavors blend different. It eats different. Let's use the, the law of extremes. What if I was like, hey dude, nice pepper there, some cilantro, some chili powder, some coriander, some cumin. And I was like, hey dude, here's your salsa to put on your taco. Oh, I forgot onion. We definitely want some onion. It matters how you cut things. There's a time for chunky and there's a time for not. If I took this and I was like, okay, here's your salsa. Still, you know, not the same experience. You're not going to get that blended flavor where it's really spread out through the food. Some people peel their tomatoes for salsa. Um, it's not a bad idea. If it was easy, I would probably do it. Some of these tomatoes, especially these Polish linguisa, are super ripe. They actually peel really easy without blanching. Otherwise, you're usually going to want to drop them in boiling water for one to one and a half minutes. Oh yeah, I also need to save some of this Polish linguisa seed because I'm almost out. Yeah, so you save seed from a big pile of these tomatoes and you don't really get that much. So I'm gonna go through all the Polish linguisa tomatoes, uh, save all the seed, add a, maybe a quarter cup of water to this and let it ferment for about 72 hours. Then you rinse the, uh, the seeds several times and pour them off and all that pulp just washes away because it's all fermented and, and uh, broken down. Package them in these little guys and they're ready to go. Tomatoes are chopped, time to move on. So chilies, I'll seed these. Scrape off most of the skin. If there's part of the skin that doesn't want to come off, just I just leave it on. And that includes if it's, I don't mind a little bit of the char in there. It just adds flavor as far as I'm concerned. I want this stuff minced very fine. I really want this flavor to get all mixed in there. These smell so good. They're just really rich. good stuff. This is all I ended up with and I want more but I'm gonna just go get some raw ones and mix those in too. I like having a few raw ones in there anyway. So again we're gonna seed this, scrape most of the skin off. If there's some that's stubborn I really don't care. Sometimes I leave a little bit of this charred black skin on purpose. And again I prefer to cut this pretty small. So I put in about, I think, six more Anaheims roasted, and I'm going to put in a little bit of raw bell pepper, just because I want more pepper, and also just for the that more like fresh flavor. Hot chilies. I think I'm going to do, well, you know what? I can't make this too hot because I'm going to be feeding it to people, and there's so many wimpy people out there that don't like hot stuff. I'd rather get most of the seeds out of these hot peppers. So I think I'm just going to put these two in the whole thing. I like it hotter and I want this super fine. Looking good. Cilantro. Good to keep your cilantro in a jar of water in the fridge. Lasts a lot longer. Same with parsley. Since those stems are soaking in gross water, get rid of them. I will use all of that. Sort through it, make sure there's no gross dead leaves like that. that. Looks good. Look at all that goodness. I don't mind scraping stuff off my cutting board because I keep my cutting boards really clean. I've been asked a whole bunch of times, what do you oil your cutting boards with? And the answer is nothing. I never oil my cutting boards. I clean them regularly and keep them dry. The only thing that really messes them up is actually this. When you're cutting for hours like tomatoes and really juicy stuff and it gets wet and it stays wet for a long time. Okay, again with the onion, I'm not going to use very much, but I'm going to cut it super, super fine. Nice and fine. After I taste it, I may add some more. I have some more onion, but uh, probably not. All right, now that this tomato base salsa is done, except for the spices and the salt, I'm going to mix this up and take a little bit of this out, probably like a third or less, just so I can freeze some salsa if it's just straight tomato salsa. 
and then I will spice and salt that separate from the eggplant salsa because obviously the eggplant's going to add some bulk. I'm going to toast these chilies. I'm doing two things. I'm toasting them a little bit for flavor, but I'm also drying them out thoroughly. All uh, ripe chilies and peppers have a lot of sugar in them, and that sugar attracts moisture out of the air. So I'm getting them crispy and just getting a little toast on them. It's real hot, so they're cooking fast. You just see them change color a little. They might change a little bit orange. Get a couple of a few brown spots. This is actually better to do in the oven because it's more even, but I often do it on the stove top just out of convenience. That's pretty good. They're smelling really good. Oh yeah. All right, I just laid these out on the counter to cool. You want them totally cool or they'll be, they won't be brittle enough. I keep several of these coffee grinders around for different uses. Look at that beautiful goodness. Okay, time for a special ingredient here. Cut those in half. Obviously, as you can see from the state of these, they're, they are pretty well cooked. So I'm gonna scrape this out and I want some of this brown stuff next to the skin, but I don't want like a gigantic quantity of it, but it can be a little strong. So I'm not gonna like scrape it right down to the bottom. Okay, now this I want, again, super, super fine. Like just a, pulp. So I did go ahead and add all three eggplants. See, super fine. Chili powder. I'm going to put a lot of this in. See how it's caking up already? That's because it absorbs moisture out of the air from the sugar like I talked about earlier. I want to save some of this for the meat, so I'm not going to use it all, but probably pretty close. If I did not have any lemons or limes, I'd use vinegar. First choice would probably be rice vinegar, pretty bland. I would use apple cider vinegar though. Coriander, a lot. I'm thinking 80 grinds minimum. Same with this, cumin. Black pepper, a lot less black pepper. A huge black pepper fan, I and mean, look at the size of this thing. I fill that pretty frequently. Yeah, we're gonna need more spices than that, but let's mix it up and taste it. It is a lot of salt. It's not a main dish, it's a condiment. And it should be quite salty. It really needs to sit for 10 minutes. Hmm, just a little more salt. It'll develop more flavor as it sits, but I can tell it needs more, more cumin, more coriander, more lemon. I want to have a good bite to it. Refreshing, biting sharpness. Yeah, so as it sits, and especially after it's frozen, these flavors are really going to move around in here and come out. More lemon. Still doesn't quite have that cutting, that acidic, fresh taste that kind of cuts through. And there's a lot of rich taste in this sauce already, especially with eggplant. That adds like a really... What was I saying? Oh yeah, the eggplant adds like a lot of body and like meaty richness to it. So just that alone, I want to be able to cut through that with the lemon, but also when it's put onto like a taco, you want that salsa to be lively, which is what this food's about, liveliness, colorfulness. That's better. So this has really benefited from that roasted eggplant. The whole thing has like a smoky charred flavor. And as the eggplant sits in here, it tends to soak up some of this juice. I mean, it's not gonna eliminate the problem of juiciness altogether, but it does seem to help quite a bit. A lot of the times when I make tomato salsa, especially if I'm using suboptimal tomatoes, like real juicy tomatoes, I'll end up having to drain a bunch of the juice off just to be able to put it onto my taco. And there goes like, you know, a lot of the flavors in that juice. I don't throw it away. I either drink it or put it in Spanish rice or something, but. You know, this is better if you can keep the juice in there with all that flavor. And this is the prepared corn. It's uh, been, since I rinsed it, it's been boiled in uh, a couple changes of water for a while. Finish cooking it and um, get rid of any residual lime. You know, there's a bunch of little white things in here. Typically, those are removed. I just, I'm too lazy. This is a Corona mill. It doesn't seem to get it super fine, but it's good enough. You want to set it real tight. Set it until it's too tight and it just is not really working and it's too slow. And then back off just a little bit. At least that's how I do it. Now, if you really want to know more about making tortillas, uh, watch my friend over at uh, Oxbow Farms YouTube channel, Tim Springston. 
He's got a good video on making tortillas, which I need to go review. I need to up my tortilla game now that I have all this great corn. I'm just gonna cut open a Ziploc bag here. I grew up eating like this because my mom cooked quite a bit of Mexican food. My dad worked at a cannery and one of his co-workers was a Mexican guy that always brought these great lunches. And my dad would mooch the guy's lunch all the time. <laughs> so eventually my mom learned how to cook this food from his wife. Uh, they were neighbors, I think. She still makes the same salsas and stuff that she learned. Now I need to make a tortilla press. Could easily have one by now. They're not that uncommon. They just show up in thrift stores and stuff around here. But I've been putting off buying one because I really want to make a wooden one with a leather hinge. Now I actually have a mono and matate that I made. That's the big, you know, stone slab with the rock you grind stuff on. But I'd like to make a better one. But with the mono and matate, you can get it a lot finer than with those grinders. And you can see I left all kinds of crap in here, like you know, Mexican and Central American ladies would probably be horrified at my tortillas, but uh, I guarantee they'll taste good. I have a nice cut of venison from the deer I shot a couple weeks ago. I'm going to cut this real small, uh, pretty fine, pretty thin. I think I'll um, slice this this way. This is a nice uh, piece of the ham muscle. And I want to shred this up pretty fine. A lot of Mexican um, meats are long cooked with like spices and really like, you know, tenderized. And I actually prefer to cook meats quick, as long as it's good meat. Like if it's meat that needs to be cooked, then I long cook it, you know. But if it's not, this is also going in the meat. Put a hot chili in there. Okay, I'm gonna make some uh, Chinese style hot chili oil. It's not about just the heat, it's the flavor. It has this just really toasty, delicious chili flavor. Yay for the culinary melting pot. I'm all about it. Think about it, there's entire cuisines yet to be invented by mixing ingredients from different parts of the world or techniques. I just wanna mince this up real fine. Now I'm heating some oil in a little pan on the stove and when it's smoking hot, I'm gonna take it off and drop this in there. I'm also gonna put about three or four of these in the oil in the pan to cook the meat. And I'm gonna burn these in the oil to flavor the oil and get the same toasted, burnt chili flavor all up in that oil before I start adding other stuff. Okay, this oil's a little too hot. I forgot about it for a minute there. Whoa. Hopefully this won't over burn these. If I add them all at once, hopefully it'll cool it down. <coughs> Let me take this outside. So first we're gonna burn our chilies in the oil. I'm gonna turn that heat down a little cause I, I don't really want the oil to be smoking, um, but I do want these chilies to burn. Not completely black, but pretty dark. We're gonna get a little bit of color in the oil from that, a bunch of heat and a lot of flavor. That's what we're really after is the flavor. And I want the peppers by themselves in the hot oil because they're gonna they're gonna cook different in, in the oil frying. They're gonna caramelize a little bit, which I want, and I want the flavor of the peppers to get into the oil before I cook the meat. So we've already doubled up on that. See how the oil's starting to turn yellow now from these peppers? Right about here, the peppers are half cooked. Add the onions. I'm gonna go ahead and add some spices. Again, same stuff, coriander, cumin. Do not burn the onions. Don't let them brown. Okay, so the peppers and onions are pretty much cooked and I'm gonna scoot them to the cool side of the pan, push them way up the side here, tilt the pan, squish them and get the oil to run down to the other side of the pan. I want them to keep cooking just a little bit and for the flavors and the peppers and onions to merge together and the spices and the salt and all that. But I also want to get this oil, right? I don't want any oil, I want this oil. Roasted pepper goodness, onion flavor, that is magic right there. If I took all this stuff and I just threw it in a pan and cooked it any old way, it would just not be the same. It matters how you cut stuff, it matters how you cook stuff. 
I'm going to spread the meat out in a single layer, put spices on top, and then leave it and wait for it to heat back up. And I'm going to move the pan over so the heat is over here cooking the meat and not burning the already cooked peppers and onions. Put a bunch more cumin and coriander in there, a bunch of salt, and then the chili powder. This is some nice um, hand-gathered Mendocino sea salt from tide pools on the coast. So ideally, I'm not sure it's going to work out now because I could see it's it's real wet in there, but I want the meat to brown a little bit on the underside before I start stirring it. I'm going to add my chili powder now. And if I don't get the brown on the underside, it's not the end of the world. Okay, so the meat is just almost cooked. There's just a few little raw spots in there. If I just turn it off, pile it up in the middle here, it's going to finish cooking. And that's how I like that. Finally, I was get, I get my new razor today. I was going to shave my head clean, but uh, I couldn't get to the mailbox because I was busy cooking all day. Okay, we have our meat, avocado, hot chili oil, salt, just in case, salsa with roasted eggplant, tortillas, Mexican Coke. Yes, it's actually better, and a beer. Not a Mexican beer. Not better. Oh, yeah. Cheers. If I do this right, there should be like a party in your mouth. Deep, rich flavors, meaty flavors, but with like a lot of um, diverse high notes too and like refreshing flavors. An analogy would be it should be really colorful, but if everything's right, it should get your attention. So let's see how I did. Um, now the salsa I can make adjustments to, and of course this is a good ultimate test, right? Hopefully I didn't overburn this chili oil. It's a little overdone, but... And it's hot. Okay, now with the heat, now this is subjective because heat's different for everybody, but the heat should get your attention, and it should be part of the experience, and it should, yeah, it should wake you up, but it shouldn't keep your attention. If it keeps your attention, it's too hot. I don't care about any of this macho, like the hottest peppers in the world crap. The priority is to enjoy the food. The heat should augment the food and round out the experience and get your attention, but not keep it. Yeah, these tortillas are very brittle. There's something, something's weird. I need to up my tortilla game. Mm -hmm. Very good. The flavors just keep coming. You know, they keep building, and then they maintain, and they, they level off, and they plateau, but they stay intense. Just add a little more lemon in the salsa to just cut through and get a little uh, brighter flavors in there. Yeah, super good. The meat, really good. There's like pepper and chili flavor through all the way through the meat everywhere, and lots of it. I'll work on my tortillas. I gotta go watch Tim Springston's video. It may be that I <clears throat> let this uh, corn sit around for too long before I ground it. It's really good. Wish I could fit more salsa on it. This hot chili oil too, it just adds a whole nother dimension. Just finishing up this little bit of salsa here. It's really good. It's so it's just got this smoky flavor all through it, but it's not really overt. It blends in really well. Just excellent. And not quite hot enough, but I had to like make it and uh, plan on feeding it to a bunch of pansies who don't like hot food. So what are you gonna do? Watch my video here on uh, making chili powder if you're interested in that, and I'm going to finish this stuff up and pretty much go into a food coma.